Thank you very much, Jennifer, and uh, sisters and brothers, comrades, what a privilege and delight it is for me to be here. What a privilege it is for me to share a platform with Jimmy McClucky, a Unite member, and someone who's fought very hard for us in the past. Thank you, Jimmy. How great it is for me to be back in Glasgow. Glasgow, not only one of the greatest cities of our nation, but one of the great cities of the world. A city that has a reputation for fighting for justice. And you know, when I think of the Scottish people, three words come to my mind. Proud, passionate and strong. And never before have we needed that pride and that passion and above all else, the strength of our Scottish brothers and sisters as we face the ideological attacks that this Westminster government are perpetrating on our communities. Ideological, as the previous uh, speakers have said. So much ideological, and I'll come back to that in a moment, that they're even trying to suggest that May Day should be scrapped. They want to take it away as a public holiday and put it somewhere else, attacking the very essence of what we stand for. Oh, over 120 years, as previous speakers have said, working people throughout the world gather on this day in order to celebrate our values. And this crowd are trying to take it away from us. I'm reminded of the words of John McLean, one of the great sons of Glasgow. He once said in a speech that there is no human being on the face of this earth, no government who would take away his right to speak, who would take away his right to protest against wrong, who would take away his right to fight for everything that was decent for the benefit of ordinary people. He went on to say that he stands here not as the accused, but the accuser of a system dripping with blood from head to toe. And we should remember those words, and that's why I want to take some opportunity to say thank you to our young people, right throughout the UK, and in particular up here in Scotland, who've been out on the streets protesting, and as a result find themselves arrested. There is the Glasgow Defence Campaign, defending young people for exercising their rights. I gave this message to the Metropolitan Police in London, so let me give it to the Strathclyde Police up here. Keep your sleazy hands off our kids. If they want to go out in the street to protest, they should be allowed to do so. Comrades, the question of protesting is all about raising the consciousness of ordinary working people. That's why the STUC's Better Way campaign is so important. It's about exposing the lies, because that's what's happening at the moment. We're being told lies. We're being told by the Conservative government that the debt of our nations is so great that we all should be losing sleep at night. It's a lie. Servicing the national debt is less now than it was at any time from 1945 to 1997. They tell us lies. They tell us lies all the time in order to debilitate us. They tell us that there is no alternative. You'll recall you heard that mantra back in the 80s when Thatcher told us there was no alternative to decimating our manufacturing base to destroying our communities, to putting three million people on the dole, no alternative. And they're trying to peddle the same lie now. Nearly a million young people on the dole facing a prospect of destruction and despair. Another lost generation. And that's why we need to expose these lies. And we need to tell people that of course there's an alternative. There's an alternative called the People's Charter. The People's Charter that spells out that we should be investing in our communities as opposed to destroying them. What about the 25 billion minimum 
amount of money lost to the Treasury every single year through tax avoidance. Not tax evasion, but tax avoidance. 24 billion. And that's why I also want to say well done to the organisation UK Uncut. Those young people who are out demonstrating against companies who don't pay any tax. Vodafone, £6 billion they owe us. £6 billion. They decided, no, we're not going to pay it. We'll pay you £2 billion, but we're not paying six. And what did the government do? They invited them in to the government to give them advice, perhaps to tell them how to fill in some of their tax forms in the billion millionaires that occupy the cabinet. Sir Richard Green, the owner of Topshop and other companies, his company should have paid £285 million last year so that we could look after our schools, look after our hospitals, build our infrastructure. But, well, the company, you see, is owned by his wife. And his wife lives in Monaco, and because she's an undomicile, then she doesn't pay any tax. No tax. Robbing from you and I. Robbing from us. Who are these people? These faceless, chinless wonders, these harbingers of greed, who attack our public servants? Public sector workers are the people who teach our kids, who heal our sick, who look after and care for our elderly and infirm, who encourage our youth, who clean our streets and empty our refuge. Public sector workers. Public sector workers are the very people that create the civilised fabric of the communities in which we live. And we need to make certain that we don't allow the media the media, the boss's mouthpiece, the mouthpiece of the privileged elite and the corporate giants. Do you know that three quarters, three quarters of the world's media is owned by a handful of billionaires? And they try to split us. They try and split public sector workers from private sector workers. They try and create a division so that they can push forward with their particular policies and their attacks on our communities. Attacks that have got no basis in reality. This isn't just left-wing rhetoric. There are eminent economists, Nobel Prize winners, who say very clearly that the government strategy of cuts is deeply dangerous and could take us into a double-dip recession. Not only attacking public sector workers and the services that the rest of us enjoy, 600,000 according to their own figures being thrown on the dole, but a further 700,000 being thrown on the dole in the private sector. What kind of mad economic logic is that? Put a hundred and one, one and a half million people on the dole, drawing benefits and not paying tax. That somehow is supposed to sort our deficit they try and scare us all the time. We'll end up like Greece, we'll end up like Ireland, we'll end up like Portugal and Spain. It's a lie. There is no comparison between Britain and Greece in terms of credibility and credit within the world. We are a three star, uh, uh, three A plus star credit nation and that's not going to change. But of course, telling lies is what they're good at. And that's why we have to summon up the strength that exists within our, within our communities, to make certain that they don't get away with it. 65 years ago, our parents and our grandparents, having defeated the evil of fascism in Europe, came back determined to build a land fit for heroes. They built the welfare state, they created the National Health Service, they gave us universal education. And now a gaggle of public school boys in Westminster are trying to take that away from us. And we're not going to let it happen, are we? <laughs> comrades, comrades, one of the other things that they try to do in the media, they try to debilitate us. They try to make us believe that there's nothing really we can do about it. That the power of the state is so great that you might march in the streets, you might even take a few days strike action. 
but there's nothing really you're going to be able to do about it. I reject that. The history of our movement, the history of the world tells us that when working people unite, when working people join hands across nations and oceans, anything is possible. Anything is achievable. Look what's happening in the Middle East at the moment. People power. People power works. And that's why we, as leaders, and all of us in here are leaders, have to raise the consciousness of our people so that we can defend our communities. Scotland has always been at the forefront. You've virtually routed the Tories from your nation. The elections are coming up in a few days' time. And all the opinion polls are suggesting that Labour won't take control of the Scottish Parliament. But my message is that anyone can fight back. As a Liverpoolian, I remind you we were 3-0 down in Istanbul and we still won the European Cup. So it is possible to fight back. But I want to give a friendly message to the Scottish Labour Party. Because it's no use embracing the concept of cuts, only we'll cut thinner and not as deep and not as fast. The reality is that new Labour philosophy, that slavish adherence to the ideology of neoliberalism has failed. And Ed Miliband has indicated <laughs> I was talking to some good comrades before of the Keir Hardy Association that's just been started up. And I just want to quote something from Keir. He said that he'd been an agitator all his life. That he'd worked with one sole purpose. So that he could stir up a divine discontent with what was wrong. That's what Keir Hardy said. That's our legacy. That is the legacy of the Scottish Labour Party. And they need to reclaim a radical edge and move away from any attacks on public services. They need, they need in particular in this city to work with trade unions, not to take our facilities away from us, not to create arm's length companies that is just another sleight of hand of privatisation. Retake, retake that radical edge that Keir Hardy, that John McLean, that Willie Gallagher and Jimmy Reid gave us so that Scotland can once again lead. And I say this to you comrades, believe, have faith in your values because your values are the values of millions of ordinary Scottish working people. The values of decency, of dignity, of justice and equality. Let's remain confident that our class, together, can achieve justice. Thanks a lot, comrades.